Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to the official opening of our reinvention laboratory. What a pleasure to see so many of you here today. And for those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Corinna Egra. I'm a professional presenter and moderator in uh, most fields of business, politics, and economy. And I have the great pleasure to be your host, not only today during this opening session, but throughout this entire week in, of our lab, reinvention laboratory. This laboratory shall be an impulse generator. But when I look at you all, I think I already see what is uh, key to success or will be key to success throughout this week of the reinvention lab. It is you, all the participants of this 2016 general meeting, who will fill this uh, forum that's ahead of us with uh, life, with their contributions, content, and communication. The lab does play a very special role for this general meeting. Nothing like that has ever happened in the past. It's a special forum dedicated to a lively discourse regarding the effects of digitalization on standardization. And DKE, the German National Committee, who is your host during this entire week here in Frankfurt, during this general meeting 2016, is absolutely convinced of the necessity of this element. But some of you may ask why? We've never done this before. We've done well with that so far. Why would we need a uh, yeah, innovative format like that right now? Well, it's a question I certainly cannot answer too well. But I know someone is here who can. And I have the great pleasure to introduce to you the uh, president of DKE German National Committee, Roland Band. Please come on stage. Thank you very much. Roland, thanks so much for coming. Again. Why has the time come for a format like the reinvention lab? Yeah, to answer that question is, is very simple. The uh, challenges we are facing are tremendous and very urging. And uh, the reinvention lab is all about the future of standardization, nothing less. And this future of standardization is very much very closely linked to the digitalization of our world. You might say the digitalization is the future. The digital revolution is as powerful and as disruptive as the industrial revolution was 250 years ago. And the momentum is tremendous. Just little mistakes, little failures can create tremendous uh, impacts and enormous consequences. And like in every revolution, we will have winners and losers in this revolution. Just recall what has happened to some of the big players in information technology or telecommunication. They dropped from the top down to the bottom within the blink of an eye. It's just because of making a little failure, not adapting fast enough to changing needs and changing environments. And some were able to correct that and to get better on track, but most of them are already history. And the same happened to complete to entire industries in these days, to whole industries and their jobs, they already disappeared, like typesetting or photo lab technicians. Their profession is already historical. So that can happen because of digitalization. But there's another side of digitalization, and we want to look at that side, driving very, very powerful success stories technology um, achievements, which we have perceived less than a generation ago as science fiction, are reality today, are created in, within months in this day. Enormous value is created by these factors, by this driving force. Countless new jobs, new professions are emerging, and digitalization is definitely having a big, big changing impact to our whole world and also to our world of standardization. We cannot stop that. All we can do is to, to shape it, to take the chance to, uh, of the change as an opportunity, to make it a chance for us to take the best out of this change. 
and that's what we want to do in the reinvention lab. We want to, to ask the right questions and we want to develop answers to this question. Maybe not the final answers, the uh, definitive answers, but at least we want to share experience. We want to talk about new ways of work, new ways of standardization, and we want to share best practice examples. For example, like the Standardization Council for Industry 4.0, which is on the other side here, where we can discuss new ways how we think standardization has to adapt to the need of digitalization, how standardization can become ready for the digitalization. Have in mind, this is a lab. It's a place for, experience, for experiments, and experiments can fail. But even in that case, in our understanding, a failure is also creating a lot of really useful and valuable information for us. That's the way, that's the spirit, how we want to work together in this lab, being in a very open environment, in a very creative environment, and uh, talking about the things like they are, working on the real challenges. That's what we want to do, creating new ideas, working on new solutions, working on new visions and discussing that. And I would just say, let's get the things done here. Well, thank you very much, Roland Bent. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think it gives it quite a dimension what is ahead of us. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let me now introduce my next guest here. Um, it is the Secretary General and CEO to the ISC. And I think with his international management experience. He is predestined, I should say, to build bridges among the different cultures and groupings of the electronic standardization. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to Franz Reusbeck. <laughs> so, so, ladies and, gen and gentlemen, I'm very happy we are here together that we're here together in so big numbers, and that you are here because of you think there is a big value in the IEC. Um, as you know, and as just been mentioned by Roland, the world is changing rapidly. And change is there, and change is constant. Actually, my very first um, speech to the council, I really made that statement. And um, in my years uh, previous to the IEC, I had always a coffee mug on my desk. And on it, it said, it showed a windy road downhill. And it says, change is good, but you, unless you fail to make the turn. Okay? So the IEC has to make the turns. The IEC has to change. The IEC has to be quick, nimble, fast, because our stakeholders need it. They say so. Okay? At the same time, we are a global organization. And what is a, um, how should I say that, uh, something that is very possible or very doable in one country may be insurmountable in another country. We have to take the cultures, we have to take the situations into account of where we come from. Uh, for example, um, we speak English as our working language, but many of us speak na natively different languages. And we have to take all these things into account. So it is our responsibility as IEC to put in place the tools to make it as effective and as possible to collaborate with others, to make those turns that are being required from us in the near future. And uh, if we do this with all our members and if we support them all to move forward on this path, then I think we have a brilliant future. And I ho really hope that in this reinvention lab we will discuss new ways of working, we will discuss ideas that are living amongst you. Some of them, as Roland said, may fail, some of them we pilot, and they will be a success. And let's hope that we have many successes. And I hope that this new format uh, that DKE put here, which I very much admire, will be successful for us in our connecting people, our connecting of you as experts together, because we are one community that really wants to be fast, and actually the fastest downhill, making all the turns right in time. And for that, we all need to work together. Thank you. IEC General Meeting 2016. Connecting communities. Reinvent standardization.